Evening, everybody. Um, my name's Jill Holroyd. Um, welcome to you all today to St Peter's, our lovely church, and you're all coming here to find out about getting married and all that sort of stuff. We've got a few little things to talk to you about. Um, I'm going to make some introductions first of all. But if we just say, that in the first instance, my name's Jill Holroyd. I'm a member of the, I've been a member of the church for four years. I sing in the choir, um, so I'm very involved here. And my husband, David, is the organist. So, um, and we've been married for 34, is it 34? <laughs> 34 years, I think, lost a bit of count. What was the date? 14th of February, we got married on Valentine's Day. How sick is that? <laughs> Just means you can't forget your anniversary, really, can you? Um, so David's going to go through some of the music stuff, and we've handed you out a sheet to look at those sort of things. It doesn't mean you've got to have something off that sheet, but it just gives you a few ideas, maybe, which can be helpful, and he'll provide some links and things like that if you want to go away and look at them or maybe talk to your families about them as well. You all know Anne the Vicar. Um, Anne and I, uh, you might look at us and think we're, you know, what we are, fairly ordinary, but we actually are massive Liverpool supporters and go to Anfield with our season tickets. So, you know, again... It, it doesn't mean we won't marry Everton supporters. No, no. <laughs> but there has to be special dispensation for Anne. It's she, a special licence if you're blue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Anne, as you know, she's going to go through all the legalities of um, the wedding ceremony because it's, it's all changed recently and it's a bit confusing when you come along to know what to expect. So, Anne's going to go through that as well. We also have uh, Wendy Thorpe at the back, who's uh, quite often verger for the weddings as well. So, she ushers people in and positions them where they've got to sit and all that business and happy to answer questions. She's also very good at pouring wine. And then Simon, who's our curate, Simon McCauley, and he's here as well to answer any questions and will be involved. So please feel free, this isn't, you know, you're not in a classroom, Put, you know, if you want to join in or ask a question, do feel free to do so, it's very informal, and then we'll give you some more information as we go along. So, now, would you like to grab a drink, and then I'll, because I'm going to go very quickly through the legal side of things, and it might be better if you have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, but let's do the legal stuff first, okay, David? Getting married in church. Okay, qualifying connection. I'm just going to run through these because basically what most of you will have done is checked with me at this stage, have you got a qualifying connection? But just to be absolutely sure, uh, you can get married in a Church of England church um, if you at any time have lived in the parish for a period of at least six months, you were baptised or christened in the parish, was confirmed or your confirmation was entered in the register here, you have at any time regularly gone to church services in the parish for a period of at least six months or one of your parents at any time after you were born has lived in the, in the parish for a period of at least six months or has regularly gone to normal church services here in the church for a period of at least six months it seems to be the magic figure um, or one of your parents or grandparents was married in the church okay thanks david if by any chance you don't qualify under any of those, but I reckon you all do, um, if you can't demonstrate any of the above connections, uh, you could create one, not just randomly create one, but simply by attending your chosen church uh, for usual services for at least a month, once a month for six consecutive months. So if somebody gives me enough notice, as long as they have attended here regularly, that gives them a qualifying connection. Okay. Now, bans are still a legal requirement. They tried to chuck them out, but um, the old-fashioned Church of England folk thought, no, they're actually really nice and cosy bans. So what happens is that the bans announcement is made in the church that you're getting married, so here. But if you live outside St Peter's boundary, you have to get your bans read in the parish that you live in. Okay, and this is what makes this legal. Okay. So if you're both living within the parish boundaries, you're absolutely sussed because you're just relying on me to remember to do it. Um, but if, if you, one or both of you live outside the boundaries, I do need to get you to contact your local church for them to do it as well. They do it all the time. They're not going to look at you as if you've got two heads. Um, this isn't the, at the moment, I'm reading bands for Elliot and Amy and also for a couple who live in, um, who are getting married in St Michael's Altcar Church, but live within St Peter's. That's the legal bit. 
Bans are a very ancient legal tradition. It goes back to the idea that we all lived in villages and when I stand up here and go, John and Mary want to get married, this is the first time of reading these bans, um, that somebody in the congregation will know that they've already been married. Now that is highly unlikely these days that people know each other that well, but bans has been kept. The nice thing about bans is they're an awful lot cheaper than getting a license. If you can get a license if you were living abroad, for instance. I've had a, an inquiry from a couple in Singapore. They have a qualifying connection, but they can't get their bands read in Singapore, so they'd be on a license. Anybody living here should be fine on bands. They need to be read three times, three morning services, three months before you get married. So it's just so you're aware of that if you don't live within the parish boundaries. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. It is really nice if you're here. I will let you know when your bands are being read here. And it is kind of nice if uh, you're here to hear it happen. Um, and yeah, bring whoever else you want along as well. It, it is nice for you to be here for it. Okay, David. I will send these slides to you afterwards so um yeah so three sundays doesn't have to be consecutive sundays um if there's not enough notice for bands say the other church is forgotten then we look at a license but that can happen quite quickly and as i say as long as if everybody's on british passports or european passports then uh, we're sorted it's quite straightforward okay uh, it is nice, uh, I've already seen most people's passport photographs at this stage, I don't do it just for a laugh. Uh, I am meant to check whether you are British citizens um, because I had a couple once and he was still on an Australian passport and that created a completely different situation. Um, as long as you're all on British passports, we're fine. If either or both of you are divorced, um, I would need to see your decree absolute. I have no issue here in this church marrying people who've been divorced. Uh, so that's not a problem, but I just do need to see the legal bit of paper. Okay. Now, marriage laws have changed. Uh, just last year, or actually this year, um, so it used to be that I would fill out two registry books, I'd fill out the license and I'd hand you the license on the day. So the laws have now changed. So what happens now is that we fill out a marriage document on the day and when that's all signed I deliver it to Southport Registry Office um, and I deliver it because I really want to know that this has got to them so I hand it over and once they have sorted that you can apply online for your license. They've just made it kind of similar for everybody whereas the Church of England because it's an established church used to have different, a different situation where we were licensed as registrars so we fill out this marriage document on the day and then you apply now what else is new we now want to know who your mother is the old bands form i wasn't interested i only want to know who your father was i used to reckon because it was easier to prove who your mother was but that was uh, an aside uh, but it was an old-fashioned thing that it didn't seem to matter who your mum was so that has now changed. So we now include the name, occupation of mother, father, step parent. And if, for example, you have adoptive parents or your parents are separated and remarried, we can include step parents. We can name up to four. And that may seem uh, a lot, but I did have one couple who were on six parents because they were adopted and then their biological parents hadn't stayed together and had remarried. So you can manage to get up to six. Um, if you don't want to, we can actually leave it blank. Uh, that is your choice. But we now look for names, occupations, whether they're retired or not, and that kind of information. But you can you discuss that with me as we go along. Okay. Also what's new is the number of witnesses. It used to be you only ever had two witnesses and they had to be over 18. You can now have up to six witnesses, which is slightly excessive 
and it's a very small box on the marriage document. So it would be kind of nice. Um, the last wedding I had, it was the best man and two bridesmaids, because the two bridesmaids were her sisters, and it does mean now that she didn't have to pick a sister to be the witness. So we can have up to six witnesses. Uh, and they actually don't have, amazingly, they don't have to be over 18. You have to decide that they are old enough. Uh, Bailey's not doing it, by the way. Oh, that <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, if, if, yeah, he's four. That's why. Um, but you can now, as long as whoever it is is signing, has a full understanding of what they've witnessed is now what the legal requirement is. So, but again, we discussed that particularly at the rehearsal, uh, who you would like to be witnesses and how that works. And I will need that for this marriage document because that goes, is included in it. Okay. What time to get married? Legally, the wedding must take place between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. on any day. Plenty of scope. I'd probably appreciate if we didn't do it at 8 o'clock in the morning, but if you want to do it, I'll work, work with you. In St. Peter's, I only ever organise one wedding in a day. I, I don't try and have one in the morning and one in the... So the day is yours, so you can pick what works for you. Depends when you want to get to the venue, when you want photographs. Sometimes if people get married in the winter, they want to get married earlier to get some light. It's up to you. Just let us know as soon as you've decided um, and uh, we can work with it. Our main thing is that we want your wedding day to be as special as possible. We want it to be as personal as possible and we will do everything we can to help you make that happen. Um, my job is that when you actually come to your wedding service is to make you relax enough that you enjoy it and remember it. I've had one or two wedding couples in the past who look like rabbits in the headlights. Um, because they've got so caught up in the amount of detail uh, that by the time they get to me up here, they just look stunned. What I want to see is you come up here and be relaxed. And enjoy. Yes, you'll be nervous, but not so nervous that you won't enjoy what you're about to do because it's a really special occasion. And we want to make that personal, special, and something that you'll remember forever. Okay. Yes, there will be a rehearsal. As I said, the rehearsal, you come because we have a rehearsal so that you have some idea of what's happening. Helps. But once you've done the rehearsal, you can go away and forget because it's the clergy's job then to guide you through your, your service. Uh, it is amazing what, what I can say to you up here that nobody else knows. It's like I will show you exactly where you will sit and let you know that if I'm doing windmill impressions, it's because I want you over here. Um, so it's my job to guide you through your entire wedding service and you try not to be over nervous. To focus on each other and the important thing you are about to do in a new chapter in your lives together. Um, so we will try and make that as special as possible. We organise rehearsal when it suits sometime like the week, during the week before. Um, if it's too far in advance you really will forget everything I've said. So. Okay, David. Now, order of service. If you want to stop me at any stage, because I'll just go on a roll. Yeah, Beth. Who has to be at rehearsal? Um, obviously, the two of you. Um, preferably, whoever is walking you up the aisle. And that can be a father. It can, it's sometimes it's a mother or a brother, or whoever it is. Or, indeed, I've had brides walk themselves up the aisle or come up the aisle with them if they've got a son. So basically the couple, whoever's walking up the aisle. Um, now, if you think about what you want to do in the day, some brides come up first, followed by any bridesmaids. Others have the bridesmaids come up first. If the bridesmaids come up first, I need them at the rehearsal because if we don't rehearse them, get having Whatever Wendy does at the back to try and stop them running up the aisle, by the time they get up here, they're in a, they're in a heavy clump by the time they get this point. If bride comes first, then it doesn't matter what bridesmaids are doing behind. Um, but yeah, they can actually gallop up that aisle at some pace. So it's nice if we can rehearse them. Um, after that, it's fine. Don't need anybody else. 
if you've any flower girls or page boys or, or children that you feel would help that they were here, or indeed I was asked recently about the pet, the dog, um, it is kind of good so they're, they know what the place is like. Um, but yeah, we don't need a whole lot of people. Um, okay. Uh, go back one. Yeah. Order service. Now, I have a whole dose of orders of service here for you to have a look at afterwards. Some of them have been run off by the parish office. Some of them are fancy. Oh, that was a parish office one. It was just different. Uh, some of them are glossy and fancy. You can have a look and see what you want. Uh, but mainly the church, the service for your wedding has been set by the Church of England. We're working on their laws, so I'm kind of bound by the framework of the service. And sometimes I'm asked, can we write our own vows? And no, you're afraid you can't. Um, so we have the order service. A number of you should have already had that first draft from me, because I do tend to send it to people as soon as I've met them. But then we try and make it as personal as possible. Uh, there'll be music, hymns, readings, poems, all of which you decide on. The other thing to make it personal is by including people to read. That can be poems, readings. They can also read the prayers if you have lots of people. I can involve as many as you would like. But these are the sort of things that you need to start thinking about. Um, nice of the order service kind of planned by certainly two, two months beforehand. If not, unless of course you're getting married in less time than that. Um, so it is good to not leave this to the last minute. Absolute deadline is a want for the rehearsal. Um, and I'll say a little bit about more about that in the end, but I'm going to let David and I tell you a bit about the music and the hymns that you can have. Okay. Hello. Right, you wear organist on your chest, just to make sure they know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, the most important thing of your day is the actual marriage. Um, but good music can make all the difference. It can turn it from a special memorable occasion into a very special memorable occasion. Our daughter enjoyed one of the most musical weddings um, ever, because with me as a musician she didn't have much choice. And bless her, the only thing she actually asked for was, all you need is love. But she ended up with, and yes, she did get the choir singing, all you need is love. So it can make a difference. We're fortunate here in having a very fine organ. Um, it's fairly small as organs go, but as you'll hear in a moment, it packs quite a punch, and it's versatile. We've also got a pretty competent choir, two of whom are sitting at the back. A very competent choir. Of course, you don't have to have the choir, but a good strong lead to the singing of the hymns actually encourages everybody else. And it covers up any awkward quietness if your guests aren't terribly inclined to sing. They can also provide music before the service and while your family and friends are gathering, or while you're signing the wedding documents. But if you don't have the choir, then I usually play appropriate stuff on the organ. I'm not going to play everything on this little list that Jill gave you, and in fact I'm going to email it to you afterwards because then you can click on the titles and you can then hear each of these things as YouTube, so you can have a little listen to all this. But as Jill suggested, this isn't exclusive. Um, we can have within reason almost anything I suppose, unless it's too sacrilegious. Um, I'm going to play just a couple of little things so you can hear what the beast actually sounds like. First of all, you could be traditional and have the first one on the list. Um, one bride recently told Anne the only thing she was bothered about was having the DDD music. And the DDD goes, DDD, DDD. So that's the first one on the list. And it goes a bit like this. gallop up the aisle, that's all you need, but hopefully you'll take it slowly. Or you might want something a little more different, um, something like this perhaps. It's not 
sounding too fine today because it doesn't like hot weather. But it's due to be tuned soon anyway. Or possibly something like this, equally sort of grand and imposing as you make your entrance. list there are several other things and of course within reason we could do whatever you want. Um, when it comes to hymns there's probably about a zillion choices and you could have words that aren't in, on a hymn book because if you're having a service sheet you can have them in there obviously and would want a vet something like that. The important thing to bear in mind is whether you have the choir or not um, um, think about what your family and friends might be able to know and join in. You'll likely want two or three, one near the beginning, one near the end, and possibly one in the middle. It gives the congregation a chance to be involved in more than just we will and amen. And it also gives them a chance to stand up off these rather comfortable wooden pews. Um, so there's a few suggestions on here. Um, there are equally many, many more. If there's... And then to go out, um, you might want the very traditional one, which is this. If you do want the choir here, at the moment they're up there, but hopefully anybody getting married next year, they'll be back down. Um, there is a photograph of one of the weddings with the couples, couple coming down and the choir are in the background. Readings, you're getting married in church, so Bible reading would be really good. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is a really good one. It's the one all about love, but there are lots of others. Um, if you get stuck, please talk to me, but there's lots listed in that booklet. Uh, the booklet is just suggestions to give you somewhere to start. We have had poems, anything from William Shakespeare to Winnie the Pooh. So have a look. There's quite a good website called hitch.com that makes all sorts of suggestions of poems and readings. You don't have to have a poem. You don't have to have Winnie the Pooh. Um, but, you know, we're quite open to anything. As long as it means something to you, then we will try and make this work. As I say, we want the day to be as special as possible, and that means the service being as personal and special as we can possibly make it. Okay. So, yeah, the order of service. Um, Caroline in the parish office, some of you may have already spoken to her when you were first inquiring. Um, the, she can run off the order of service as I send it to you, um, and that's fine. Obviously, there is a small cost for doing that. What I send you has standard pictures that I've put in. They can all be changed. For example, um, Nathan and Chelsea had photographs, their own photograph with their engagement photograph in the front. Somebody's had kids, we've had dogs. Um, we've had cartoon versions of themselves. You, you can add whatever into this um, and it can be, they've put quotes in the back. Uh, open to anything. 
uh, and she can run them off or as I say you can go to a printer and get a really glossy fancy she does a really good job but that you can get real glossy fancy ones all I ask is if you go to a printer will you please let me proofread it before you tell them to hit print um, and I want it for the rehearsal. Um, and the so we have a, it, some sessions that we put on for people who are getting married or post married or whatever. And it's a very nice environment. We get people on a bit of a chat together. And it sort of follows the lines of looking at relationships, but in a sort of not threatening or intrusive way at all. Um, we sort of get people talking about um, reacting to your in laws, you know, because that can cause some tension when you're in a relationship. Uh, finances, even, you know, some of us like to go spend all money on season tickets and have to uh, have that discussion pre season, you know, or some other black ones go and do beautify themselves out there, don't have to do You know, that sort of stuff that can put attention in your relationship. So it's something we put on, very informal. We can do it in public, it suits people. We can do it on our rooms, have a few drinks, you know, have some food, whatever, and just make it very relaxed. Just sort of talk about some of the things that might impact on your relationship going forward in a very easy way. A non-judgmental way to dream really goal. Because none of us have got, we've all got things in our lives to be a bit different to maybe it would have been nice to be able to talk about it beforehand. You know, just talk things through. So we'll set up those and I'll send an email out and hopefully see some of your faces there. Even if you can't come to all of them, you'd be more than welcome to join in. Bro. Okay, just a few other things, and I'll ask you to some questions. Obviously, flowers. Uh, we have some very good people who do flowers in the church. They will do the flowers at the altar, um, and uh, uh, they're normally white. So, but if you want other flowers, to be honest, this church, I know I'm completely and utterly biased, but I think it's quite pretty on its own. It's amazing how few flowers people are having at weddings. It used to be there was masses of pedestals and window displays and all sorts of things um, so but you can have those if you want okay getting married is about what you want you could look through a list of what the traditions are and think I have to have this and I have to have that and I have to have the other and I have to you don't what you need to do to get married is we need to make sure the legal bit is done then you need to come to church and we need you to exchange your vows and we need to sign the right marriage document after that, it's your choice. So please don't feel under any pressure by anybody to do anything other on your wedding day than what you want. Because all the rest is just traditions and things that people feel you should do. That is the minimum. After that, you decide. Uh, so you can have pew ends. You can have window decorations. You can have pedestals. Um, or you can... Simply have the flowers at the front. Your choice. Okay. Uh, if you're getting married at Christmas, you don't have to worry about any of that because the church will be decorated for Christmas and there'll be a Christmas tree and the windows will be done and there'll be candles and um, it's rather nice getting married at Christmas. We now have, after the pandemic, have a live stream. We're actually, um, we are recording some of this for a couple of the couples who couldn't get here tonight. Um, if you do have relatives in Australia or New Zealand or whatever and you would like them to have the live stream link, you just need to have a conversation with us. Well, it's really Dave, but you need to talk to because he understands it all. Uh, it is now something that we have. If you want to see how it works, we live stream the main morning service every Sunday now. Um, there's a lot of people, older people. Um, Sam's granddad watches it, watches us every Sunday. Uh, so if you want to see how the live stream works, have a look at the link on the website. Um, I'm always asked about confetti, absolutely fine, in the churchyard, please make it biodegradable. Um, you don't have to wait until you're outside the church grounds, we really don't mind. Um, so go for it. You can have the bells, uh, most of you will probably have a photographer or a friend who's a photographer. How do I like my photographers? Invisible. Um, <laughs> I haven't quite come to blows with wedding photographers, but it hasn't been too far from it. Uh, basically, I've told them, don't have clicky cameras. This, this day and age, why do you have a camera that clicks? Uh, I don't want anything to put you off what you're doing. So if I find a photographer on my shoulder, there'll be um, 
th there will be a kind of a, 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 a twitch from me that will move the photographer. But I talk to them beforehand. They are more than happy to be up here. I'm not a vicar who says they're not allowed at the front of church. But it's just that we are quite limited on space. So if they start running up and down the aisle, they put everybody off. But I'll have a chat with them. But you're more than happy for them to be up here. We also open the balcony. If you want photographs taken from there, it's quite a good angle. Um, they can come in and see you signing the marriage documents. No problem at all. Just as long as they don't put you off the importance of what you're doing. At cost... Talk to Caroline, our parish administrator. She deals with all of that. Uh, there is a list at the back of your booklet, but she'll sort that out. I don't deal with the money. And the really important thing is that you have a very special day. So please talk to us. I say, talk to David about your music. Um, have Jill and Wendy have been at lots of weddings here now. They know what works. Um, They've both sang at weddings here. Uh, you know, Simon's at the back. He's now going to, he hasn't done a wedding yet. There might be one here, Simon. Um, so please talk to us because we do want this to be really special. Um, so if you have an idea and you think, will this work, just talk to me. I am not shocked easily about people's suggestions. So please do talk to us about what you'd like. Everybody's situation is different, everybody's relationship is different. And what we want to do is celebrate your relationship. So we don't just produce a carbon copy of something and assume it fits everybody. Um, so please, as I say, especially when you've got plenty of time, think about it, talk to me. Um, and we will try and make anything possible for you. Anybody, any questions? And please do ask because, yeah, Dad. Yeah, it stayed. We keep it up for about a week, don't we? Um, oh, you haven't deleted any of them. So, yeah, you can actually. It's, um, yeah, a bit more, but, but we started it because of funerals. Because we, during pandemic, we were in so limited on numbers. Uh, but yeah, we baptisms. Anybody who now requests, so uh, yeah, you get the link, and then you can down, you can download it and watch it afterwards, sir. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be whenever the vicar wants to do it. They just have to, if you give them the three months notice, uh, what I would tend to do is look ahead and see, like I'm reading bands for three couples at the moment, um, and then I'll be closer to the time be reading for the next weddings that I've got coming up. So it will depend on whether they're reading bands already, and they'll probably put them together. But just give them plenty of notice. And if you're not quite sure who you're, what parish you're living in, which boundaries you're in, if you go to a site called a church near you and put your postcode in, it'll tell you. But if you're stuck, let me know. Uh, comfortably, about 250. It's not really not an issue. The, the nice thing about this church is you could 50 at the wedding, I've had 20 at a wedding, or I've had 150 at a wedding, and it works. So yeah, it's not. It, it seats more than you think. Yeah, like um, there's one of the photographs. Uh, it's certainly on the back of that booklet that you've got. That was a winter wedding, and they got the group photograph here with the photographer on the balcony. So yeah, if it's not nice outside, you just come back in for your photographs. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, February it could be. Who knows? I got married in January, and it was a lovely day. So. I think the thing about winter weddings and summer wedding people, to close your ears a moment, but you're not expecting good weather, so whatever you get's fine. And if you, if you get it dry, then you're going, hey. <laughs> Parking around here can be a little bit of an issue. Um, but, yeah, you can. Don't rush away. Talk to each other. Um, more there, there's more drink. There's orders of service here. David sat there. Um, so thank you for coming along and as I say please be in touch if there's anything at all that you need to know um, and we really look we all really look forward to having a very special day